as many companies might not have been prepared to have their entire staff working from home for this long, we're all more or less struggling, I suppose, to cope with this new and uncertain uh, situation. And um, I assume that communications is key, well, uh, something we also learned yesterday, uh, how to efficiently communicate remotely and cross cultures, which might be even more important nowadays. But now to challenges in working uh, remotely and leading teams. We are very, very pleased to have with us experts from Goodwill, um, a long-term member of the chamber. So a warm welcome to HR manager Jackie Brown and HR advisor Anna Kulinska. Um, sorry Anna for mispronouncing your name. Uh, uh, will sh who will sh both share advice which we all need on how to successfully lead a remote team during the COVID-19 crisis. So I will, with warm hand, hand over to Anna and Jackie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Christina. Um, so good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, as Christina has mentioned, I am the HR manager at Goodwill, and Anna is one of the HR advisors on my team, um, and we will both be speaking with you today. So you do not have to listen to my whole voice uh, for the entire presentation, which you'll be very pleased to know. Um, so. 19 has led to significant change um, in most people's personal and working life due to social distancing and office closures which has been encouraged by both the UK and the Swedish governments. Um, teams are used to working together in offices but now they're being left with no choice but to work remotely. Um, many are new to the situation and that is both managers and employees. Um, and previous ways of working are being disrupted by a lack of natural interaction putting pressure on finding new ways of communicating, monitoring and motivating employees, um, and also measuring performance. So during this webinar, we're looking to guide you through the items that we suggest you consider to ensure the effective running of your business at this, this crucial time. Um, so we'd like to give you uh, some information about our work at Goodwill to begin with. Um, so un unless, or unless you're unfamiliar, um, Goodwill was founded back in 1997 by Annika Goodwill. For more than 20 years, we have offered essential business services for companies who are looking to enter, grow or scale in the UK. Um, we offer all of our services under one roof, um, covering five departments, which are corporate legal, finance, HR, payroll and virtual office. If we look at uh, people management, um, as mentioned, today you'll be hearing from myself and Anna from the Goodwill HR department. We have years of experience in assisting Swedish and other overseas companies with their HR needs. Um, so you can see from the slides some of the core areas that we help with. However, in summary, we deal with the full life cycle of an employee from recruitment to termination and everything that comes in between. Um, during the COVID-19 crisis, we've advised and assisted, for example, Swedish retail chains with their UK operations, um, the furlough, furloughing of that and um, any staffing reductions that they may, may need at this time. Um, however, let's continue with highlighting the practicalities of working remotely. So if we look at um, technology infrastructure as being the first point, so if we look at the physical practicalities of home working, and what you need to have in place. It may seem commonsensical for some, but let's just move through it. Um, if we consider an office-based role, which arguably would be the type of role where you can work from home, what equipment is needed when working from home to carry out tasks um, and to be able to, to conduct and, and carry out emails and video and phone meetings and so on. So you would need a, a desktop computer or laptop, a monitor, um, keyboard and mouse, um, preferably noise cancelling headphones as well, you know, people live in, um, in blocks of flats, that can, they can have noisy neighbours, so it's, it's always a good thing to have. Um, a webcam potentially, but crucially software, um, so employees really need to have the same access when working from home as they would have in the office. So you really, we really need to make use of the technology that's available to us. So on that point, what software do you have available for employees to have the same access when working from home? 
Do they need access to, um, to work documents, to folders and files? What about connectivity to their colleagues and clients? Um, so are you currently um, providing appropriate video conferencing software? Uh, there are lots of alternatives like Teams and Skype and Zoom in the marketplace. What about whether your employees have Wi-Fi or broadband um, or VPN connection? Um, if that's not something that they already have, is that something that you would consider paying for during this temporary period, um, given that they, they do need to have it at home? Do your employees need to make phone calls as part of their role? Um, could they be international calls? If so, do they need a work mobile phone? Or maybe again, you could look at some software um, which can be installed on, on their uh, laptop to enable that to happen at a lesser cost to the employee or to the company. If we look at data security, um, you need to make sure that you're protecting your employees' personal data as well as the company data and clearly client data. So have you taken adequate measures with your software and hardware when working from home? Um, in particular, we need to bear in mind regulatory policies. Um, so with laws like GDPR governing what data is kept and how it's stored, you really need to have tools and processes in place that will not put your company or your client at risk. <clears throat> um, also, if we look at a comprehensive and integrated information protection strategy, um, this will make sure that only authorised people within your uh, business can gain access to specific information. So that's something that hopefully you will already have in place pre-COVID-19. Again, if we look at GDPR and the necessities there, but particularly within a remote working situation. Um, for example, do you know what personal information that you hold? Um, and if it would be classified as personally identifiable information? So again, it's something whether um, if you hold something on file that would be able to um, identify an individual that would be classed as personally identifiable, identifiable, not speak today, identifiable information. Um, so is this stored across a variety of locations, including devices and apps and cloud services and, uh, or even on premises? So you really need to think about um, whether you really could adapt manual or, or, or apply automatically apply sensitivity labels to those files um, and data security actions like encryption should absolutely be considered. You also need to ensure that all information which is stored is only accessible for the relevant audience that it's meant for. Um, so that could be personal data or it could be any other sort of client data which you hold. So absolutely you need to ensure that that sort of information cannot be accessed by any other third party if we think about home working, could it be accessed by the individual's family members or friends or any other third parties? Um, and then also, in case of emergency, are the contact details or next of kin details for your employees updated and accessible? Um, we really need to make sure that at this time, uh, when we can't physically see our, our colleagues, that we, we need to make sure that they're okay and we have got an, an available, available avenue to contact them. Um, and also your IT support should be easily accessible to your employees. So um, employees should be easily able to raise IT issues directly with the IT support team if that should occur, um, whether that be sharing their screen or emails or phone calls. So aside from providing the correct hardware and software, as an employer, you also need to consider the health and safety of your employees. <clears throat> Excuse me. You do have the same health and safety responsibilities for home workers as for any, any other workers. Um, and ideally, you should be able to carry out a risk assessment on your home workers. Practicality wise, we, we do appreciate that's not always going to be possible. Um, and therefore, if it's not possible for you as an employer to carry out a risk assessment, your employee can do so um, if you, you give them the correct tools. Um, so that could be a questionnaire or checklist or something um, of a, a similar ilk where they can, um, they can just work through what they need to be mindful of. So things to focus or areas to focus on would be, does the employee have a place to sit, um, a chair to sit on a desk? Are there necessary reasonable adjustments for an employee who maybe has a disability? Um, so do they need specialist keyboard equipment or um, a specialist mouse, an ergonomic chair, um, a height adjustable desk and so on? Um, or is the employee a new or an expectant mother? Um, and if so, do they require a change of working hours or working times? Do they need more breaks and so on? Um, as an employer, you do have 
a responsibility to your employees, but employees also have a responsibility to take reasonable care of their own health and safety. So we just need to bear this in mind. Um, anyone who is working from home should keep in regular contact with their manager and they should also tell their manager about any health and safety risks in their home um, and any homework and arrangements which need to change. So examples of this could be, as already covered, working different hours, um, maybe agreeing that they may not be able to work a full day or a full week, uh, maybe reducing work targets um, or being flexible about deadlines where possible. If you also look at insurance as well, um, so we, you really need to look at your own company insurance to make sure that your employees are insured when working from home. Um, so looking at your employer's liability insurance and personal accident insurances, do they operate in the same way um, when your employees are, are remote working as when office based? Is the company equipment covered? Um, employees should also check whether there are any issues with them working from home uh, with their home insurer or with their mortgage provider or, or landlord. It's a really good idea for employees to remind their staff to check this um, because it, it basically means that it, it covers them against a claim by a third party. Um, once physical items are resolved, you need to think about how you're, you're going to care for your employees during the time that we're in lockdown and foresee any issues that might come up. Um, so Anna will now talk to you about employee wellbeing. Thank you, Jackie. So as Jackie mentioned, once you've got everything in place in terms of physical aspects, you need to think about the mental care that you're going to provide to your employees. Working alone from home for a long period of time might contribute to a higher rate of mental health issues. A sense of belonging as such is an integral part of being a human. Social distancing measures have severely limited our ability to connect with our family, friends, but also work colleagues. Although there are ways to still keep in touch and stay connected and socially active, working remotely undoubtedly makes this much harder. As an employer, your duty to take reasonable steps in relation to health and safety also extends to mental health. It is important that you know how to spot the signs that might indicate mental health illness or people being vulnerable. First of all, think about changes in work habits. Often, changes in work habits are chalked up to poor performance, but it does not always have to be a case, so it's very important not to jump to conclusions straight away. Lack of motivation, difficulty in concentrating, or lower than normal productivity isn't necessarily a performance management issue. It might be attributed to one of the mental health issues and conditions. Another thing to think about is changes in physical appearance. If your workers who are usually always arriving for to work for early and perfectly groomed and they start violating your dress code policy by looking scruffy, it could be an indication that they, have, they are having a difficulty coping. Changes in personality is another change that you might need to look out for. Dramatic changes in personality can indicate mental health struggles, exhibiting either nervousness, restlessness, or being more irritable than normally, see, seeming passive, worried, or tense, or acting in a different way than usual are all changes to look out for. Increased absent, absenteeism could also be a way to, to see that somebody is struggling. So when an employee who is usually always there on time for work and they start showing up late, missing meetings, not coming prepared to work or calling in sick more often than usual, it could be a sign of a mental health disorder. Physical complaints, aches and pains, as well as excessive, excessive fatigue or just seeming generally draggy and tired can be signs associated with depression or anxiety. Another sign to look out for are outbursts and mood swings. A, lot of, a lack of control of emotion, outbursts and swings can be associated with mental health illness. Does an employee seem unable to deal with little things or with stress? Disruptive behavior or acting overly aggressive can all be mental illness red flags. Another thing to look out for is seeming withdrawn or avoiding social interaction. An unwillingness to communicate, seeming withdrawn and avoiding social situations, as well as self-imposing the isolation, can all be signs of mental health illness. If a coworker seems to be avoiding engaging with other team members, it could be a cause of concern. 
the most common mental health conditions are depression, anxiety, and stress, which is not classified as a medical condition, but it can still have a very serious impact on well-being. As mentioned before, as an employer, you do have a duty of care. This means that you have to do all you reasonably can to support your employees' health, safety, and well-being. You can minimize the risks of your employees being subject to these factors, but first of all, staying connected, making sure that you can do an extra effort to give your employees quick video call or to ask them about their plans for the weekend or any other activities that make them happy and keep the sense of belonging. Encourage video chats rather than calls if possible. If you haven't heard from someone in your team for a while, check in with them and just ask them if there is anything they need or if they just fancy a simple chat. Extroverted team members will find the adjustment much more difficult, so perhaps check with them more often than with introverted team members. Don't ignore the problem. Speak about mental health and ensure that your employees can still speak to someone in a confidential manner if they are feeling down. At this point, a use of employee assistance program could be beneficial. If you do not have one in place already, there are also several uh, free mental health support services, such as Able Futures, which is a government-run program by Department for Work and Pension, and it is a mental health counselling service. You can also advise your employees to get an advice from NHS websites on um, the topics of well-being advice. Find ways to make it more fun. Do not forget about fun initiatives. It is all about work as well. However, you always have to allow your employees to unwind and teamwork as such. Maybe Friday drinks on Zoom or teams with quizzes or team exercises will help to build, build this sense of belonging. Take all concerns seriously. If you do manage a team, make sure that your team has lots of opportunities to tell you if this new way of working is going okay. Take all concerns seriously. Big changes to how we work can feel very stressful to people and it's important that your staff members know that they can tell you if things aren't going quite well. You can always think as well if you are working on reduced staff numbers, think if the workload that you're providing to your staff is actually manageable. Encourage sustaining work-life balance and well-being. While the office is at home, it can feel really, really hard to actually separate these two items. So encourage your employees to, first of all, take their lunch breaks and breaks during the day to keep them, first of all, productive and secondly, in a good headspace. Think about initiatives helping your employees to keep their body in the good shape too. If you do have platforms like Perkbox, they offer several classes and they cover pretty much everything you can think of from yoga classes to kickboxing online. Remind your employees that they also should try to actually take care of themselves and stay mentally and physically active outside of working hours. That can include anything that makes them happy as such. This might include cooking, exercises, watching a favorite TV program or other hobbies. Ensure that all the necessary measures are in place as well. If you offer any benefits, such as life assurance or any other insurances, make sure that all the data on files is up to date and consider your arrangements in terms of pay during bereavement and be as prepared as you can. Although the law does not specifically specify the amount of the time to be pay taken off in case of dependent passing away, it still needs to be reasonable. And remember, this is a learning process for all of us. So, you need to adapt to a new reality and you, you need to help your employees to do so as well. A group who might find it even more difficult to adjust to the current way of working are parents working remotely. To help contain COVID-19, many schools are moving children to home learning and in addition, parents are being asked to work from home. It can be very, very hard to get kids together for play dates or sleepovers, as well as get help from grandparents. So parents are left with caring for their children and at the same time working. As home and office blends together, striking a balance between family and work life might feel nearly impossible. It's easy to feel distracted, unmotivated, or unable to cope at all. Feelings such as inadequacy, stress and worry are heightened as parents try to balance home duties alongside work tasks. Whilst working from home might feel chaotic, as an employer you can make sure that you put things in place to allow parents to work effectively. 
First of all, you need to be honest with your employees and understand their situation. Honesty and dialogue, <clears throat> very open dialogue with the team, being empathetic towards their struggles and being real realistic in expectations as well. Support around this is a key factor as it is an engagement tool and can reinforce loyalty, a crucial tool in retention. Another item to think about is being flexible. Perhaps, perhaps you can offer flexible hours in the afternoon or evening, you might want to actually do a list and prioritize the tasks which are more important than the others and to be completed within specified time. And all the other work can be done within additional flexi hours that the employee would conduct. Allow time off for family and dependence for your employees. Employees are allowed this time to deal with an emergency involving a dependent. So allow a reasonable amount of time to deal with emergency, depending on the situation. As an employer, you may pay for this time, although you are not obligated to do so. A dependent could be a spouse, a partner, child, grandchild, parent, or anyone who depends on the employee for care. Think about employees with caring responsibilities as well. Employees who are unable to work because of their caring responsibilities resulting from coronavirus can be furloughed. For example, employees that need to look after children, in particular those of very young age, um, or parents with children who do have some special, special, special sorry, educational needs and disabilities. Another group subject to higher levels of stress would be lone workers without supervision. If they do not have a direct supervision or anyone to help them if the things go wrong, they are more subject to any mental health conditions. Remember to keep in touch with your loan workers, those working from home. Ensure that you do have a regular contact and that you're checking that they are staying healthy and safe. Put procedures in place and keep in direct contact with home workers so you can recognize the signs of stress as soon as possible. It is also important to have a procedure in place so you can have an emergency contact and the workers do feel that they can contact someone at any point if anything goes wrong and get the help they need. Employers should consider individual employees' needs, for example, anyone with child care responsibilities, a long-term health condition or any disability. If the contact is poor in general, workers might feel very disconnected, isolated or even abandoned. This can affect stress levels and mental health. As you've probably noticed already, the key to managing your workers in an effective way is emphasizing the importance of communication. Employees need regular communication in general. However, in the times like that, it is even more important than ever. They need guidance on effectively working from home and support to protect their health and well-being. Changing to home working may be a challenge for many managers and employees, in particular if they are not used to working this way, if the normal interaction would be a face-to-face -face interaction. It is important to build up a healthy relationship of trust and confidence. Try to use video calls if possible rather than phone calls just to be able to see your teammates and just to see how they're doing and to keep this sense of belonging. Remember about keeping the communication positive as well. When we are flooded with all the negativity from media, our families and friends, it is important to do have something to look out for. If you do manage a team, maybe think about while you're doing your one-to-one -one or performance reviews, think about asking your employees what positive they would, what positive they would like to achieve during a day. Encourage them to share the positivity they had during the day. It can be very simple things like, for example, cooking a very nice dinner, having a date night or Amazon parcel coming in earlier than expected. It's little things that make the difference at the end of the day. Leadership communication is also very crucial. If you are a manager, discuss with your team how they would like to be managed during this time, how they would like their supervision to be run, any check-ins, remote sign-offs, or anything like that needs to be addressed. Let people know how and when to contact you. And at the start, try not to go outside of borders unless you've got a routine established already. Employers and managers should make sure that everyone working from home knows what's ex expected of them. And that includes agreeing various items such as when employees are available to work, how they will keep in touch, 
how they will take care of their work-life balance and how it, they would like it to be managed. For example, taking regular breaks and switching off from work at the end of the day. How performance will be managed and measured remotely and taking into account different people's needs and circumstances where necessary. And who employees should contact shall the circumstances change or if they just want to speak. Encourage working proactively rather than reactively as well if you do have a scope to do so. Fit in exciting projects and development as well as training opportunities if you maybe did not have time to do it prior to coronavirus. Don't also forget to recognize your employees when they do something really well. It is even more important now than ever to say simple thank you when employees might feel like they are left alone with their workload. It is also crucial to keep employees informed of the current business situation and be transparent on what challenges the company might face them later down the line so you can work together towards a solution. Having these conversations will not always be easy. However, being clear from the start might ease the transition and build the relationship of trust and confidence, as well as help you to develop long-term strategies. I'm now gonna pass over to Jackie, who will speak about how other important elements fit into managing workforce in this new reality. Thank you, Anna. So, um, as already outlined, there are important considerations to be made for your business at this time in terms of whether homeworking is even possible, um, and if so, how to make it work. And of course, looking after your employees and their mental health while we're all feeling our way through this trying time together. Um, so it is in the company's best interest to make sure that employees stay healthy and engaged. As already highlighted by Anna, the pandemic could have dire consequences for the mental health of your employees. Um, we need to remember that isolation is isolating and this can lead to poor engagement, which leads to poor productivity, which of course is bad news for any employer. If your business is lucky enough to be able to continue functioning and your employees can still, still work remotely, then of course there are still potential conduct and performance related issues which can arise. Um, so if we look at how you're currently managing productivity, um, this doesn't necessarily have to be measured by time spent, bearing in mind the flexibility which may be required at present for parents or carers who, who may be home working. Um, so you should set clear targets to work towards and invite employees to outline why these targets have not been met as a way of making sure that tasks are still being completed. One option would be to request that employees submit daily or weekly reports while the period of home working continues. Um, and by keeping in regular contact, you can also keep employees up to date on all developments, such as the company's continued response to the coronavirus issue. As already outlined, at this time, there is a need for flexibility in the workplace and for better communication in the workplace to keep your remote workers engaged. But nonetheless, homeworking can lead to some employees being less productive or perhaps struggling with the quality of their work at this time in this particular environment. <clears throat> So it may be necessary to, um, to look at disciplinary action. Um, we need to remember that your remote workers are still interacting with one another, um, with clients and so on, which can give rise to interpersonal issues. Um, perhaps they're abusing the situation to make it more advantageous for themselves. Um, and businesses are using technology such as Slack and Teams, Skype and so on more and more. So it can be very easy to forget that this is actually a professional tool um, and can give rise to potential um, for inappropriate conversations, excessive chit chat, which of course affects productivity and so on. Um, obviously we need to rem be mindful that tech is obviously good, um, and as we've outlined in our, our communication recommendations, but at this difficult time, we need to remember that, that it, it can cause rise to issues. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, use technology to talk to your employees about those issues, stay in contact, um, it's a great way to be able to manage performance or conduct matters. <clears throat> it is still possible to implement a performance management routine, whether that be formal or informal in a remote working environment. And again, technology greatly helps here. You can still make sure that you follow a proper process to monitor this and to hopefully turn the situation around if possible. Um, but if it's not possible, then you can still hold formal meetings to investigate a performance or a disciplinary matter 
um, you can carry out uh, disciplinary or performance processes if necessary via video chat. Um, it doesn't have to be a face-to-face -face meeting. So please don't feel as though um, any issues that you're facing need to be put on the shelf and kept on hold until we can be in a face-to-face -face situation. We are entering a new world where it's likely that remote working will be normalized. And so we, we need to become used to operating like this. If we look at bullying and harassment, um, so workplace bullying can still take place in a remote working environment. Uh, bullying behavior in the workplace need not be conducted in person to be considered a form of employer, employee harassment or discrimination. And there are various cases demonstrating the means by which harassers and discriminators may adapt their behaviors towards remote workers. Um, an employer's liability for the conduct of their employee is not waived simply because a victim is working from home. So that is very important, particularly in the case of harassment, um, which does become a legal issue rather than just being a workplace issue, particularly if you as an employer have not done anything about this. So if such conduct is related to a protected characteristic and is done in the course of employment, then the employer will be liable for the discriminatory detriment that the worker suffers. Um, an employer can also be vicariously liable under the Protection from Harassment Act 1997 if an employee is harassed even when it is unrelated to a protected characteristic. So just bear that in mind. Absolutely bullying and harassment can occur using an array of mediums, so um, chat rooms, emails, mobile phones. Comments do not always have to be made to the employee but could be about the employee and then the employee learns about or sees the comment that is made. Um, so managers really need to look at their own behaviour as well. Um, if we look at other elements, so it's not just chit chat or defamatory comments, um, micromanagement of employees can be seen as bullying. Um, and of course, depending on the context, um, victimisation or discrimination, which could be considered harassment. So micromanagement conducted under the guise of reasonable employee monitoring and assessment is more likely to be um, regarded as harassment or bullying if there is good evidence that surveillance and check-in the particular member of staff is beyond what is normal for others. So um, tracking of times that remote workers log will be a standard process in many companies and records of that will be kept but how companies react to one person not logging on for long enough or um, on occasions um, where they don't feel that there's enough occasions that would that if that's of interest, then uh, those inbuilt biases can, af can afflict um, some, some judgments that's made. So do people assume that women are more likely to be caring for children or attending to household chores more than a man? Um, are there subconscious bias about age or race or nationality that would impact the views of the manager if they decide to tackle the remote working about their input during the day? So that would all form part of harassment rather than bullying, just for clarity. So harassment can be subtle um, and can be often more passive when remote. For example, it could be seen as fostering an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment for a senior employee to neglect to copy their colleague into emails or to invite them to online meetings. So perhaps we should be particularly conscious that it is easier to isolate a member of staff remotely um, we really need to think about what has taken place without them that may not be as readily visible. In this new world of remote working, perhaps it's now a good time to implement measures to protect your business against a wave of potential cases of bullying and harassment. So remember that because, the current crisis, because of the current crisis and fear of loss of employment, that fewer employees may be, uh, may be willing to complain about any distress and behaviours. Um, until the current situation is resolved. So employers should really think about putting in place specific policies and practices to ensure that managers do not start manifesting potentially unlawful behaviours, which is more likely to arise with remote working. Um, and there we come to the end of our, our presentation. So I will hand back to, to Christina. So thank you very much, uh, Jackie and Anna, for a very interesting presentation. And I think a lot of us will recognize uh, ourselves um, in, in these current situations. And uh, 
taken some of these measures, thinking about them. And I think I would like everyone to, if you have a question, do write it at the Q&A button. But I think, Emil, if you agree, we're a small team and I don't think we've seen this much of each other um, before um, when we were sitting in the office as we do right now, because we're in front of each other all the time uh, trying to, to um, support our members the best we possibly can. I think it's been, it's been good in that way, a great experience. And as Christina said, please do use the Q&A button if, if you do have questions for Anna and Jackie. Uh, we did receive some questions prior to the webinar from uh, Johnny Boström, who I can see is still in the call. I'd very much like to give you the word, Johnny, uh, so that you can ask your question straight to Jackie and Anna, if that's fine with you. You are now able to unmute yourself. Okay, hi, Johnny Boström here. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Yeah, I uh, was a bit curious, what kind of meeting format do you have? Do you have like daily huddles at a set time in the in morning or and what other kind of meetings do you have uh, set up during a, a normal week? We're supposed to, yeah, Jackie. <laughs> uh, Emil and I speak all the time. <laughs> um. I mean, I think it very much depends on the, the team setup, really. But personally, within Goodwill, it can um, operate differently between um, each team and, and whether it be a senior management team or whether it be the actual team like HR. So the way that the HR team are managing um, our interaction at the moment is every morning we have a morning meeting. Um, it, can, it only needs to be 15, 20 minutes. Um, but just to, to actually connect with each other to make sure that we're all aware of what it, whatever each other's doing in the day. Does anyone need some assistance with something? Just generally to make sure that we, we're all aware that each other still exists and you don't just become part of your own little bubble. Um, with, um, with, with the wider, wider company, we are having um, whole company meets once a week on a Friday. Um, so that's always good for, um, for, for further engagement. And then um, senior management meetings are happening a few times a week, but it's all via um, either Zoom meetings or, um, or on, on, on Teams chats. Um, so I think that's very important just to be able to physically see one another as well. So it's not just a phone call. I don't know if you have anything to add there, Anna. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing that we do actually have fun activities with each other. It's not only about work as well, but we do meet and we do talk to each other just because this is very disrupted in today's times when usually you would chat even about how your weekend's been or anything like that. Now it's much harder. So I think it's very important that you do not only have the actual work meetings, but also extend it to fun meetings too. Yes, and also as we said prior to, to this webinar started, Jackie and Anna, that uh, some people are more likely to be used to using these kind of ways of communicating digitally. Um, mm -hmm. And Johnny, I know that you're very um, tech savvy and digitally um, aware, So, um, but not all of us were before, so we've really learned new both new ways of communicating, but also how to actually be more comfortable um, sitting in front of a screen instead of actually hugging people and touching them like this, like we're used to. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for the question, your name. We did also receive a question from Neil McLaughlin, who is also in the call. Neil, if you would like to ask your question uh, straight to Jackie and Anna, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Um, <laughs> you have to remind me what my question was, Emil. I think it was um, it was more about me being a manager and what were the uh, how would you um, what are the main things you see in how my life should be changing? Uh, we've been talking about um, things are very very different, and if they're not different, then we've been doing things wrongly. So um, what were the main um, things that you think should change for a manager's life when things move to a remote way of working? I think for, for me, the biggest changes are just um, the communication aspect, really, and, and making sure that you're still, 
you're still keeping human contact with your team members as a manager. Um, there is, as highlighted more in, in the part of the, the, the presentation that I gave, um, there is still an, an issue or potentially issues for productivity and managing um, and managing that side. And sometimes that can be perceived as being more difficult to do that from a remote working perspective. You know, sometimes having that difficult conversation over a video call or um, on a phone call can just feel a little bit more jarring than having a face to face interaction. Um, so I think that would that they would be the main changes or the main visible changes that I personally feel are more difficult. What I would add on top of that is as well that as a manager, you have to, I think, outline the expectations you would have mm. for your staff members as well. So just let them know how you would like the things to look like or talk with them, brainstorm and come up with the solution that will work, how they would like to get sign-offs from you or approvals of anything or any sort of these things. This is very important to actually establish it so everybody knows yeah. what is expected of them and how to conduct work. Yeah. But also having group meetings as well. If you're in a group meeting scenario, if you're all in the same room, then um, it becomes more visible if certain individuals are not speaking or contributing, and maybe they um, feel more encouraged to say something if they are in the same room. But if you're all in a group conversation where you're maybe on a phone call or maybe on a Zoom chat where you can't necessarily see everyone on that call, then they will just sit in the background and not maybe feel too nervous about holding their hand up to say something. So um, another technique which was suggested recently um, was that, you know, maybe if you are in, in, a, um, in a group meeting, if everyone is aware that at the end of that meeting that they will maybe need to contribute something or, or to um, maybe give comment on what they've learned or gained from that meeting, they're more likely to stay engaged throughout the entire meeting um, rather than just switching off. Um, and that's, that's a good technique. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. We've, we've been doing a, a lot more check-ins at the start and yeah. then something like that at the end and then hoping that the middle just takes care of itself really. So, no. Yeah. But so Neil, are you all working from home at the Vatican? We are. Park? So I, I have uh, people in um, Amsterdam, Berlin and Stockholm <laughs> all working from home uh, in my team. Um, and then the ones in, in London as well are at home. Yeah, that's, that's probably not that easy, but you're somehow you're also used to um, <clears throat> having people work. How did you used to be in contact with all of these people? Did you used to travel to see everyone or did you? I did. To... Yeah, I, I would yeah. travel a lot because I think it's quite nice that people see the manager. But then at the same time, we're also very much focused on, uh, on, um, on the environment as well at that as well. So we try and find ways of reducing the travel. So we do do a lot of video conferences, um, so we're quite used to it. And then, um, so we have lots of different discussions that we have and, um, and, you know, calling out people's names and having the clock everybody written down in the meeting, making sure everybody's uh, uh, taking care of being polite to each other and including all these diverse opinions as well. So it's quite mm. interesting for us to hear your uh, thoughts here as well, so thanks for that. Yes, well, my experience is also that you get much somehow a little closer to people because you do prefer to have this kind of uh, web um, so that you see each other. So I've had so many more meetings recently mm -hmm. um, also by looking at people like this and you see each other's homes, you see their living rooms or even bedrooms and mm -hmm. even though that might sound strange when you say you're in each other's living rooms or bedrooms but you know it's, it's somehow it gets more personal and I think people are very keen to help each other and say okay let's let's try to find the working hours that matches what what everyone can do and as you know here in Sweden most schools are still running so you at least have some time during the day where you don't have to take care of the kids or or try to to assist someone yeah I think that's a really interesting point and all yeah. those uh, all those really good parts that how do we take those things forward and back into the office maybe when we go back as well exactly living with the virus as we've been talking about um working with strategy neil what's your point on that um so i suppose for for us uh, the strategy doesn't change for us we still uh, we carry on with uh, what we're doing 
but then I think one of the things that we're, we're used to in our department is uh, being used to ambiguity and uh, and how things change and, uh, and being comfortable working in a, an environment where things change a lot. So this is very much changing it uh, and testing it, sorry, uh, and how we uh, approach problem solving and how do we do uh, make decisions and all these things were interesting that you touched upon those as well, uh, Jackie and Anna, and how do you um, formalize or be more explicit about how you actually make a decision or how do you discuss something um, and how do you take into account different opinions. Um, so it's very much put those things into the focus, which I think is only a good thing because you uh, sometimes spend time thinking who makes decisions, but not how you make decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's really highlighted a lot of interesting things that we can take forward to make more robust and better decisions in the future, I think. Yes. Mm. Would you see a cultural difference? Um, I, I mean, Jackie and Anna uh, working in a, a, a company that is based in the UK, but with international clients. Do you see a difference in different companies that you work with? What, with the remote working scenario? Yes. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess we're all in a similar scenario. So um, not in that sense. Of course, there are cultural differences in general. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think certainly in some countries, remote working or flexible working seems to be more the norm. And I think that the UK to a degree is sort of catching up. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we are a, a little bit behind the curve in that and just sort of learning now how to be make this the new norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emil, did you have any pre-asked questions still? Uh, no, 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 none more of those, but I would like to bring Jane Wicks into the conversation. She shared an interesting story with us in the Q&A button below from the British Swiss Chamber of Commerce, I guess, of Goodwill. So Jane, if possible, um, you should now be able to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Yes, I just wondered if Jackie and Anna, and with everyone, but particularly Jackie and Anna with their professional hats on, saw the MP last night um, say something like, excuse my French, what the F is she thinking about? About a colleague and all the MPs. It's absolutely hysterical. We had a, our first parliament remotely and there must have been about 30 or 40 MPs on a screen <coughs> all literally putting their hands in their heads when this MP forgot to unmute himself and uh, Arosi was very bitter about something somebody had said and swore and I just thought one of the things that um, you need to do is obviously have a, an element of IT etiquette mm. I think when you sat in your house you forget mm. that you know we all occasionally lose it, don't we? You know what I mean? It's, we've got to be honest, we're human. But uh, it did not look good. Mm. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I think this leads back to the, um, the comment made around the fact that, you know, that the chat rooms are becoming more the norm to be used in the workplace. But more and more often, people forget that it is still a professional tool. Um, it is still something that's traceable and, and you should still, you know, everyone has a little laugh and a joke, but what, what one person may perceive as a joke might be very different to how someone else interprets that. But particularly if we're looking at poor language, um, then, you know, in this situation, it was someone saying something verbally, but it happens more and more in a more informal environment. And it's not a good reflection on the company. Um, and it can give rise to um, to further accusations of bullying and harassment as well, which of course is not something that that we want. I felt that it was um, particularly poor the first time the UK Parliament has gone live in this particular way. You know, with social distance, having to work on IT. That um, well, quite a few of them hadn't set up their rooms properly. There was somebody sat with a baby underneath the computer. There was another one who um, had got his pyjamas on on the bottom half of his body. And then the, the, you know, for him to swear like that, I just thought it looked terrible. You know what I mean? I would never swear, but it, 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 in, because I am conscious that we are all working. But uh, I do think it's easy when you're at home in that mindset that you just mm. forget it's a professional. Yeah. And I yeah. think this is why I've enjoyed this today, actually, because... Um, because it's Zoom and I am doing things like this with my friends and family, 
Mm. Uh, and I was, it, it's to switch mode, isn't it? I remember you're now working and it's not a bit of a laugh. You know what I mean? Thank you very much, Jane. Yeah. That's, that's a very good reflection. And uh, I think we all need to start thinking possibly even more about the digital etiquette that we talked about and make sure that we communicate and keep involving our colleagues and staff and in Emil in our cases um, our members so I would like to unconscious of time so I would like to thank both of our um, keynote speakers thank you so much for sharing uh, your views and your knowledge on how to remote um, work remotely in a good way. I think this is something we might come back to you again about and I hope that if you have any more questions to uh, Goodwill and to um, Jackie and Anna please do contact them all.